what it seems like from the image there is that they have wedged the seashell implant into the jaw. So essentially you can see that these cavities here, yes. they've actually just wedged it in okay. and it sits in there. Right. And from the image, it would appear that there's actually been bone integration. The bone and the implant have integrated. Okay. Right. And what is very interesting about seashells is that they contain a mineral called hydroxyapatite, okay. which is similar to the mineral phase of bone and teeth. Yes. So there seems to be some kind of rationale for choosing that material. Right. But what I kind of want to get a feel for is, was that purely trial and error? Or did yes. they actually understand what they were doing? I think it's probably a material that they were generally working with anyway. Yeah. Um, and they were probably using it in all sorts of things, as for tooling or, or even for uh, fish hooks or something like that, like that. It's something that they understood, they had a deep understanding of the material. Yeah. And so they knew uh, basically its strengths and its weaknesses mm. and how to carve it and what, which way to carve it and what was the best examples of that to carve. And they must have been so confident working with that material that that gave them the confidence to do something that seems to me like really unbelievably painful to do. Yes. But I, I wonder, why would they go for all that effort? I mean, if you lose a tooth, you lose a tooth. Why would you go through all that pain and agony to shape up a tooth? Well, I think it was for aesthetics. Okay. The ancient Egyptians, the Mayans, the Greeks, they were very conservative people. Yeah. And they really did judge people on mm. the way that they looked. Yeah. And people that looked slightly different to everyone else were viewed with great suspicion. So yes. I think that that's basically what the rationale was. Yeah. I'm not certain that the owner of this jaw could actually bite into an apple. Yes. That would be very interesting to find out, yeah. though, wouldn't it? Yeah. You see that it's definitely been sh shaped and worked. Um, with the purposes of making it look like a tooth. And yeah. It does. Yeah, it does, yeah, absolutely. And, they, and um, <clears throat> you know, they've 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 obviously tried to to keep it in placement with the other with the other teeth the natural teeth that are there. So yeah, now you can see that uh, that's quite skilled. I just imagine the operation was quite um, quite painful. Quite painful. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't like to no. have that done to me. No, absolutely not. Um, in terms of the tools that they use, mm -hmm. I know that back then they didn't have any metal tooling no. because metal just was not readily available in the area. Yeah. So everything that they used was either stones or yeah. rocks. Mm -hmm. how, how do you think that they went about making these? I wonder if they slightly, if it was, if it was soft, if it was, if it's, it's presumably it's quite a soft material in, in, a, in a way. As, maybe when it's a very young shell, that it's quite soft. And I should imagine there's probably a lot to do with, uh, with grinding, more of a grinding technique to grind it into, and you can get that with abrasive rocks. So I should imagine it's more taking the, the material to to the to the tool or to a surface and, and shaping it that way, rather than taking a tool to, to something and shaping it that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I think I think I think uh, again, um, probably mentally, they're not that different from what we are now. So what we would do is we would work with what we've got in front of us Absolutely. and to adapt it and make it make it. Uh, into what we what we need, it's just the technology is different. But probably the the the, the idea and the creativity is the innovation is the same. It's just it's just more advanced te technology wise. Okay, well I have a challenge for you. Okay. Okay, so you've met Fred here. Right. right. Now, as you can see, Fred is missing some front teeth. Yes. So, if I was to give you some shells. Yes and some Mayan tools, which consists of okay. two rocks. Okay. I'd like you to make some teeth right. with Fred. Okay. So just talk me through how you'd go about it. Well, uh, I would hope, I mean, maybe if, they, if, if the tooth had fallen out, there's something to work with. If the tooth is dissolved and, rot, and rot, rotted out, then there's nothing to work with. Fred's quite old. Right, so we're probably looking at something where we would have to measure the cavity because that's our starting point. That's our connection between the shell and where it's going. So that would give us some sense of scale, and maybe measuring off the other teeth as well. And you could do that with a, I don't know, a, a stick, couldn't you? You could measure it off. So I'd want to try and get my measurements right, and how and figure out how I was going to put it into the jaw. So uh, there might be that there, there's the position of the, the root part of the tooth 
would have to have it have to go in at an angle but there would have to be some f locating part so there might be a band around the tooth that allows it to when it settles in it really holds in place right because okay. i just imagine you can have the most beautifully craft, crafted tooth mm -hmm. but if it falls out of the mouth within a week then it's not done its job yeah so so i would say that that would be my starting point and then it would just probably take a long time because i think it's just the fact that you'd have to get have a little reduction of teeth going so that because if you were working on one and you went through the process and you snapped it or, it doesn't work. or there's a natural flaw in the shell it could break so you could do all that work so you would have to have a number of them going through at the same time so like you do like 10 of them so that if you drop one or, or if one shatters while you're working with it um, and then I think I think to me you're not looking at something that's very big so then I would I would think I would hand grind it on some on some stone that's quite abrasive and then I would look for another stone that's not so abrasive and polish, try and polish it back a bit so that you actually um, it gets the edges get smoother and smoother and smoother okay so that you actually make quite a smooth tooth so should we go and try it <laughs> okay let's go okay brilliant